Well, obviously, obviously, iOS has democratized the whole process. So it allowed anybody, any content owner, to go and reach the consumer directly. But my question to you is, in this case, even though I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an Apple uh, believer as well, I like the democ democratic aspect of launching content straight to audience. But my question to you, once the app stores become congested with a lot of apps, and discovery becomes an issue, you're going to need NBC. You're going to need all of these TV partners and the telcos to get some, some traction. Definitely, well, definitely. That's, that's a must. But there is a new generation of media that will be coming, like new generation of uh, stores that replace the operator. So either they change and they cope with us, or I will cut my pipe and I will start doing on the app stores. And, you know, instead of living off $100,000 that is paid two years after your launch, no, I will accept 10000 paid today. <laughs> you asked for a fight. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, um, so, so, so collection obviously is an issue as well. Yes, I do agree with you. But let's, let's, let's keep the floor to Faris to answer on this. Uh, look, uh, I, I, I tend to agree a little bit on the telco side. I, I think... Not, not to be biased, but the, the telcos do, and we, we suffer the same thing. When we offer our, our content, you know, we revenue share with the telcos, and they control, they're the gateway to the customer, and because of the payment and billing uh, ability that the telcos have, they, they have this, this monopoly. Um, it's not necessarily always a value add per se, but, you know, you, in the region you have uh, two to three telcos in every market, and you have to deal with them. In Africa, for instance, where there is a higher saturation of telcos, the rates go down. So it's not an issue of cost, it's an issue of, of monopolistic uh, activity. Now, on our side, there is a, an, a cost to that content. You know, when we issue content, you know, you have a... It's different when you're pub doing something online, but if you do a huge show, there is cost to producing that content in the millions of dollars. And that needs to be recouped. It's recouped on TV and it's also recouped on digital as well. Most of the money will come from the traditional TV model of advertising, etc. But a small portion of that gets carried on to, on the burden of digital to, to, to pay for. And that's where these revenue shares are, are needed. In many cases, it's also exposure and credibility. So when you're trying to convince a consumer to put their credit card for an app, whether you're, reaching, you're asking them to do it through iTunes or you're asking them to do it through any other medium, the ability to reach 120 million consumers in 30 seconds has got a value associated with it, right? And a lot of people and a lot of investment that goes into making that happen. And so that's why, you know, there has to be that, that sort of uh, revenue. How about this one? This is for. So today, if you're MBC, you're talking from a position of strength. You're trying to defend your existing market share. You're trying to be very uh, careful about how far your content spreads online because that to you is a cannibalization of your existing business. If you're the 499 other TV channels, then you're already in a losing business to begin with. So broadcast, and trust me, I know this from a very tough Hello. experience, broadcast is the fastest way to lose money in the Middle East. Right? Maybe horse racing is close, but for the other channels, really, Online is not a threat. In other parts of the world, online and digital distribution has been a threat because they're worried about their existing revenue streams. Here, we have a TV industry that creates lots of content. The, the budget of, for content is actually higher than, the, value of the, adver than the, the size of the advertising market. So for them, if they can suddenly get away from the archaic model they're in and start finding their customers or their viewers in new ways, whether it's through video, or online, or on mobile, or whatever, this is an opportunity. You maximize reach. You get more awareness for your, for your content. Your content lives on beyond the one week or 30 days uh, that you've broadcast it on TV. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a new world that's coming. It's not gonna happen overnight. Even if you look at the US, regular TV is still 43% uh, of share of viewing, uh, time spent and ad spent. But if you look at uh, mobile and if you look at online, it's rapidly rising in terms of time spent but there's a big, big lag in terms of ad, ad revenue. So that is also changing. There is an opportunity. It has to be managed. If today you launch and spend the same amount of money that a broadcaster spends on content and put it online, of course you're going to lose a lot of money. But if you balance your cost with your potential revenues, you can grow and quickly become quite influential. Interesting. So for, for a small broadcaster, assuming someone who's, who's obviously be losing being broadcasting on Arabsat and Nightsat, and, um, and obviously distribution costs are really high in that case, would you advise them to produce content for the digital world exclusively? Uh, 
uh, at the same standard as broadcast content? No. If you take a broadcaster who doesn't understand the difference between the economics and goes and creates something with the same budget, the cost per hour is far too high for the current economics of... What kind of cost are we talking about? So, okay. And I don't know how many microphones I need to use today. But this is quite funny. So uh, on TV, you could be talking about uh, an hour of drama could cost you anything from thirty to $100,000. Uh, a big TV show, a big talent show could be anything from one hundred fifty to $450,000. Obviously, if you go and do that model on online, you know, the size of the online market, uh, you hear a lot of the numbers. So some people say 150 million, some people say 200 million. But even whatever number you take, you have to take away half of it for search. So that leaves another half. And there's a big hurdle still today in monetizing online, but I think Google is about to solve it. And I don't know if Alfonso is still in the room. But they're about, or they've, they've been promising to basically switch on monetization on YouTube to be able to sell shares against your views and give you a revenue share. So that, I think, will further open up a huge opportunity for, for online content. But the economics are very, very different in terms of cost and, and revenue. Um, would Shahid be able to produce content exclusively for the platform? Well, Sh Shahid is a platform, but we, we, we have a production company that produces content, and the idea that we would produce um, content exclusively for digital, uh, that idea has been played around a little bit, but to Kareem's point, it's, it's, you have to look at uh, the, the numbers for that. Today, we monetize Shahid through traditional advertising. Most of the advertisers that come and want to be on our VOD platform are interested for the experience continuation with TV. So they want to own Arab Idol across all platforms. And so they come online for, with, that, with that purpose in mind. Uh, producing exclusively for digital, and if we're talking about high level, um, you know, high quality productions, I mean, he just walked you through the numbers. You know, if you're talking, I, I, I'm of the belief that it's probably more on the 150 million uh, between Yahoo, Google, Facebook. You know, I would say they'll take 60 percent of that. We're paying was what's left. The big broadcasters who manage to do this will take a good chunk of the continuation experience. What's left might it might be challenging for you to produce high, high quality content and recoup your investment. We even have a hard time in some cases recouping investment on things that we don't even have to produce. So people assume that when we, let's say, air a Turkish drama uh, on, on our TV station and then we want to put it online, that's a completely different set of rights that we have to buy. And because we started this trend of Turkish drama and now everybody jumped on board, the prices of Turkish drama rights have been going sky, you know, through the roof, and we still have to buy it for strategic interest. Like, even if we don't recoup an investment of a certain series, we still have to have it online because it's part of our value proposition. And so we see it even syndicating content or licensing content sometimes proves hard to, re to, to recoup investment on. So until the pie really grows, I think you'll have a hard time convincing people to, to really produce high-end content. Okay, so... I'd like to, to discuss a little bit the mo your mobile strategy. Um, obviously, you make a lot of money from telcos, from, from giving your exclusive, exclusive content we to certain... We make a lot of money for telcos. You make a we make a lot of money for telcos. For telcos, yes. For telcos. You, do, you do make a lot of money along the way. My question to you is, um, obviously, Apple has given you a way for you to launch native apps. And you've been making money from it. Obviously, Arab Idol has been sponsored by Pepsi. Arab's Got Talents is sponsored by KFC. So... Are you seeing um, a trend whereby probably telco revenues dropping and direct revenues from consumers or advertising uh, uh, revenue increasing? Uh, absolutely. I think the, uh, Apple today has, has put a, a fourth of formula that's a little more reasonable. You know, than, I mean, 50-50 is not the worst case scenario. It's sometimes 70-30 to the telco. You know, and then, you, get, you reach some real extremes. What's also not discussed is the discrepancy rate that the telco will give you. So they'll say 70-30 and they'll say, out of the 100 subscribers, maybe we, got, we could reach or bill 30. And so you, you're really left with a very, very small margin. I think if you're able to go direct to consumer, whether that's through iTunes or, it, you know, it's one way to go. What telcos still today provide is the reach and the billing platform. So 
you know, there is a huge value to that. It, not everybody can go direct to consumer. When we go direct to consumer, for instance, with our Arab Idol or Arab's Got Talent app, the app is generally for free. So Arab, Arab Idol app got 1.5 million downloads. Not bad for, you including, know. Including the HTML5 product? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's, it's not like uh, Angry Bird, but you know, it, it's a decent app and, and, and it got a lot of downloads. And for us, it was an interesting experience because we, try, we didn't try to monetize the app. We made our money before the, even the app went on the market. So we were very comfortable with trying to reach the masses. And uh, you know, the show is off the air and we're still getting downloads, etc. So there is a market for it. But then again, you have to crack at least one of those formulas. You either have to have a reach, which we have, we're not asking for billing from telco, so it was fine. But the demand in the market is there. So that's what I guess that experience proved to us. If you don't have the reach and you, don't ha and you are required to bill, that's where the challenge, I think, comes into play. And you will need a telco or, or some sort of mediator to, to get you in the hands of the consumer.